The Pulse School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF. Hey, it's Jessica Goose here with realagriculture.com. Thanks for joining us for another Pulse School. Joining me right now is Sarah Foster, the president and senior seed analyst at 2020 Seed Lab. Sarah, how are you doing today? Really well, thank you, Jessica. That's great to hear. Today we're talking about seed quality testing and kind of what we're looking for, especially when it comes to the good, the bad, and the ugly, um, as far as what our seeds is telling us with pulses. So uh, first off, Sarah, I guess, what would be that uh, good seed test uh, that farmers would like to see? Well, we usually get our information on seed quality right away after harvest with just a basic germination. So good seed quality for us is, from a grade perspective, grade standard perspective, is 85% on piece for a certified number one. But anything over and above that is a bonus. So 85 is the minimum. So with this sample, there are really no issues at all. We've got um, very uniform, even growth. And in actual fact, it looks to me like most of these have actually grown. So in terms of... Um, How these will perform in the field, there's a very good chance under optimum conditions they're going to do very well and they'll establish themselves in good conditions. Mm -hmm. If you want to find out more about the actual quality here and the strength of the seed, that's when you need to be looking at doing a vigor. Okay. So this is a textbook case where everything has Picture germinated. Perfect. Yeah, this is what, uh, that's what, what we you want to, see. want to see. Yeah, a clean blotter, lots of green growth and good root systems. Good. Now, not so good is moving on to disease. So what have we been kind of seeing when it comes to pulses uh, with disease? And I guess what does what does it look like? Well, we had a very challenging harvest this year. So it wasn't just pulses that were affected. Um, We've also had cereals that have had their issues, too. So the longer the harvest goes and the more the environment impacts the quality of the crop, the more likely we're going to see disease and decay and storage issues. So with pulses, um, when we do the germination, the first thing that's indicative of perhaps some disease is some spotting on the paper here. So when we open it up, we will indeed see that, yes, there is a dead seed here and there's a number of um, seedlings on here that have been either affected by storage molds or ascochyta. So ascochyta is one of those diseases that we don't want to see. Um, There's a limit on how much we can have. It's not in the grade standards but other provinces don't like ascochyta because They're particularly Saskatchewan. Mm. Um, They grow a lot of peas and beans and chickpeas and lentils, and they're all susceptible to ascochyta. So we don't want to, we have to keep a limit on actually how much um, infection there is. Mm -hmm. In Alberta, we have a, we don't really have a level because we don't grow as many pulses, but we still don't want it because it does lead to poor seed quality and obviously as time goes on it can affect other seedlings. So the blotting in the dead that would be more so that undesirable kind of uh, visual aspect of it that farmers don't want to. That's right and it's sometimes you can see it actually on the seed sample before it's germinated there's these pepper spots or some discoloration but when we've done the germination and given it the you know, perfect conditions to start to show itself, mm-hmm. we will see it. And um, you'll see quite a bit of decay on the root systems. And if there's a decaying seed or an infected seed, it can affect other seedlings around it. Mm-hmm. And would this be, for the most part, a complete wash for the farmer in order to find uh, a new seed source? Or can some of this be treated with uh, It can with absolutely treatment? be treated, yeah. Absolutely. So you want to get... Uh, a good idea of how much infection there is by testing it further. So it would go through to the disease department. This in the germination would be the first indication that there is an issue and the analyst would record that. And if the customer hadn't asked for a test, then we'd highly recommend that they get it tested and then we can talk to them and consult them on seed treatments that are going to work for them. So it's not a wash, but it's, As with any testing that we do, 
it's always opening up the story about what's going on behind mm. the scenes. Mm. And you need to know sooner than later what's actually happening with your seat, especially this year. Now, moving on to uh, mechanical and, and, and physical damage here. Uh, again, when it comes to pulses, what are we looking for? Well, peas are notorious for mechanical damage. And of course, it's easy to see before you've done the germination um, if there is any mechanical damage because there'll be splits and cracks and sometimes um, if it's really severe, the seed will be completely broken in half. Now, the problem with mechanical damage is oftentimes if they haven't um, split in half and you do see these cracks, the um, embryo that's held between the cotyledons is actually already detached or partially detached from the seedling. So you're taking away the food source and either the, um, the root or the shoot um, are missing. Mm -hmm. So it's um, important to find out through germination what's actually happening. So in this case, there's quite a number of these seedlings that have mechanical damage. And it's a situation where in some cases, there isn't any growth whatsoever, so the root and shoot are missing. In this case, it's a little bit slow, but you've got an extremely long root with root hairs and then a very, very poorly developed um, leaf. We'd have to wait and see if this would actually um, develop further in order to call it normal, mm -hmm. but in this case, it is slow, so we're going to give it a bit, bit more time. And then in this case, we have just the root, but no shoot. So those are the classic symptoms that we see with mechanical damage. So mainly that, that cracking is yes. what you would, you would yeah. see. Anything in, in terms of sprouting? Um, rarely. Rarely with peas do we see sprouting. But in terms of what's actually happening in the germination test, it really is kind of like sprouting. It's yeah. just, in, you know, in, if you compare it to something that's normal in this case... Um, these look like they've just sprouted. So it's important if anybody's doing a germination test at home, um, they understand that what we're looking for is uniformity. And we want to see several of the seedlings growing normally and uniformly and not thinking that just because it has sprouted like this, that it's actually okay. Mm -hmm. You want to have that consistency there for sure. Yeah. And lastly here, when it comes to chemical damage, th there were a whole bunch actually of commodity groups uh, really pushing uh, for farmers to have the right time, especially when it came to pre-harvest glyphosate application. Um, but weather, mother nature, all of that plays into a factor of this. And with this year's harvest across the prairies and, and even across Canada, just not really being uh, the greatest when it comes to that. I'm sure there's there's been a couple issues when it comes to uh, to chemicals uh, with pulses. Well, we have seen um, a number of tests this year that have got chemical damage. Um, we know that we're going to see this in years, as you say, when there's been a challenge with the environment. Um, and our recommendation um, for using um, a chemical for weed control and, and dry down is when the entire crop is as uniform as it can get. If you're going to have the odd patch in a low area that's still very green, those seedlings, or not seedlings, but those plants will absorb the chemical and that's what leads to the um, damage as far as chemical damage. So it's one of those things that Peas are quite susceptible to it because they're soft tissue. And if they have used glyphosate base, which is pretty much the one that causes all the problems, it starts to translocate through the seed and gets into all the um, root and shoot and embryo areas. And that, that's what essentially leads to the stunting. Mm -hmm. And we've got one here um, that is a very good example of chemical damage. And um, in this case, what's happened is it's actually stunted the, the root. There's no uh, secondary roots. And there's very, very sort of kind of nodule type things where the, you know, the uh, roots should be and there's no root hairs. So 
that's when you know that there has been chemical used on, on this particular sample. And it's something that we note on the report of analysis. And it's important because when chemical has been used, it can actually keep working um, through the seed and creating more and more problems as time goes on. So it's something that if you had a, a reasonable germination um, in the fall, it can actually start to drop off towards the spring. So this is a case where we recommend the germination is done repeatedly at least once every month before you're ready to seed. And if you do start to see a decline, well, then that's when you start to look for new seeds. Yeah, seed look for source. a new source for, cert, yeah. for sure. And again, with this sample that we have here for this particular Paul school, it is with glyphosate. But with other chemicals, is this kind of the typical of what you would see when it comes to stunting and things like that for chemical damage? The only time we see it is with the glyphosate base. Okay. And that's, that's the only time we actually see a real problem with anything. All the others are relatively safe. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Anything else, I guess, lastly here that uh, when it comes to pulses and looking for damage, what you would recommend? I think getting the test done as soon as you can. Um, don't be afraid to, to talk to our analysts about, about the results. Um, the folks here are a mine of information um, in terms of being able to explain what those results mean. I've always been a, a big... Um, I've been big and in favor of don't just look at the number, find out what's going on in the background because it's those abnormalities that can lead to issues later on. So, for example, frost. If there's frost, frost will actually keep deteriorating the seed. Same with chemical, it keeps deteriorating the seed. Mechanical damage, not so much. It's, it is what it is. And then with disease, if you haven't got really good storage conditions, it will spread. So it's knowing as soon as you can what you have in terms of quality. So testing early is, is, definitely, is definitely a key. Well, thank you so much, Sarah, for your time today. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome. Thank you very much for the opportunity.